In this video I'm going to expand on some of the testing I did in my prior video on the Phoenix uh, 612 receiver proof of concept board. Specifically I wanted to revisit some of these numbers that uh, I got for the 3SA612s where I fed in a 12 MHz IF into the RF in port of the SA612. I fed in a 15.375 MHz uh, LO signal into the oscillator port of the uh, SA612. Uh, and these are the measurements I got from the output port uh, with a 10 dB attenuator connected to my spectrum analyzer. So these numbers obviously are uh, 10 dB lower than what you would expect. So for example this number should be minus 56 dBm as opposed to minus 66. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about. It was more if you look the difference between these numbers. They're very similar and this uh, LO frequency, the oscillator frequency, should be much lower than that. And so I'm uh, just looking at why that number is so high. Obviously this third SA612 is having a bad day and uh, these numbers are, are skewed. So we can uh, not, we don't have to look at that data. But here you can see the numbers are fairly similar. For this first test I've removed the SA612 from the socket and I'm just going to apply a minus 10 dBm uh, LO frequency to the oscillator port of the uh, socket here and just look at what the spectrum analyzer is seeing on the output because the oscillator in pin and the output pin of uh, the SA612 are adjacent to each other so I'm just going to be measuring or uh, seeing if there's any um, parasitic capacitive uh, coupling between those two pins. As I said I'm going to be feeding in a uh, 1575 uh, MHz uh, LO and uh, it's going to be at minus 10 dBm and that's coming out the output of channel 2 of my signal generator and there's no attenuator here and my spectrum analyzer is set up exactly the same as it was in the prior tests and I'm just gonna apply uh, turn on the second channel of my uh, signal generator and sure enough there's a peak there so I'm seeing 15.75 and it's at uh, roughly about minus 67 dBm so sure enough there is some bleed through of that signal going through the socket and once again the uh, there's no power applied to that socket and there is no SA612 inserted into the socket. With this next test I'm now going to insert the SA612 into the socket but I'm not going to power it up it's going to be unpowered and I'm going to repeat the same measurement again. So I've now applied the uh, 15 MHz signal to the unpowered SA612 chip and the peak is still showing up and now it's showing up uh, at about minus 62 uh, dBm. So it's uh, slightly a little bit stronger but uh, sure enough it's still uh, showing up there. With this next test I'm not going to apply power to the uh, SA612 feed in the minus 10 dBm signal but there's going to be no RF signal being fed in here and I'm going to see what the output is at, uh, on the uh, spectrum analyzer. So I've just applied the signal coming in and the peak is there. Now the peak is uh, weaker it's down around minus 68 uh, dBm is what we, we were seeing before. As I did before I summarized the data that I collected from the testing I did and uh, so with no chip inserted into the socket uh, with a, a minus 10 dBm signal being fed in into the socket, the empty socket, there was a minus 67 dBm signal at the output. Now keep in mind the numbers, all these numbers here uh, I'm talking about is with a 10 dB attenuator connected to my spectrum analyzer so you need to add 10 dB 
to get the actual value. Also, keep in mind that my spectrum analyzer is 50 ohms, but the SA612, the output impedance is uh, 1500 ohms. So a 50 ohm load connected to a 1500 ohm source uh, may act as a short, and so these values may be much lower than what uh, what's actually present. However, I'm only interested in the relative numbers uh, between them. I'm not really interested in the absolute numbers. So with the chip inserted, no power applied, uh, there was a 62 dBm signal coming out of the output, which is uh, slightly higher than what we saw with it powered up, with an RF signal being put in, and with no chip inserted. Uh, with the chip inserted, the chip is powered up, but there's no RF being fed in. The LO uh, frequency that was present at the spectrum analyzer was minus 68 dBm. So we're still seeing uh, uh, some level of uh, that, that uh, LO coming through. So what I'm trying to show here is that some of that signal that we're seeing here uh, on our original test is probably due to parasitic capacitive coupling between the pins on the chip and also some sort of a, 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 a coupling within the actual chip itself.